So the question is, why is it or how is it that communities form? Mm -hmm. um, and it goes back. Uh, it goes back to this trust thing that I was talking about before. Almost always, communities start with people who really like each other, who want to have more of each other in their lives. Yeah. Like the reason that you start a community is you want to have a better life for yourself and your kids or your partner. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to bring together people who you like and you're going to try and do things together that make you happy. Right? What a great idea. Yeah. Now there's all kinds of things pushing against that in the mainstream. So, you know, single family ownership of houses and uh, unrelated people not being able to live together and all manner of uh, major and minor impediments to this thing. Um, and ownership culture, like, you know, I don't have to put my name on my butter in the refrigerator. Like, that's a big hassle. Um, what's also true is that most communities never make it, right? Like these communities starting is a bit of an anti-gravity project. You're trying to do things that are crazy hard to do, and they mostly don't work. Um, so whenever you're at a place that's a successful community, like one of the early things you should say is, nice job, congratulations. You've done this quasi-impossible thing. And what you will find if you're in a community that is successful, generally speaking, is that people really appreciate the services that it offers, or the culture that it offers, or however it is that you want to frame it, what it is that they get back from the community. They get to be with people that they care for. They get to feel supported. They get to share things that mean they don't have to work as much. So all of these things that happen in a healthy, successful community are things that almost everybody wants, but they can't get around to organizing it for a whole bunch of them. 